Okay, so let's start with a quick correction of something that we did in the previous video on uh, induced current. We started with a, a magnetic field of magnitude C times T, and at T equals 10 seconds, I incorrectly wrote, <coughs> I replaced the C with 10 instead of the T, so that becomes 10 times C as opposed to 10 times T. <coughs> So let's move on to a different configuration of current. So here is our solenoid of current. And uh, let's make some current as we usually do, wrapping around the solenoid, not too tight. But we imagine that it's uh, a tightly wound solenoid. This gives us a, an idea of <coughs> um, the direction, so let's say that the current flows this way through the solenoid, and we have uh, n turns per unit length and uh, current i star going through here. So we know that the field inside here, uh, let's make it. Um, Let's make it blue, so we know that the field in here is along the axis of the solenoid, but from the part of the Bios of our law, given the current elements flowing around this way, so dl inside, we know the field is downward. So the field points, here are some blue magnetic field lines, the field points that way. Okay, so here's the magnetic field. And now let's say that we take a circular coil. Uh, well, first of all, let's say that the radius here is capital R, the radius of the solenoid or the tube, capital R, and the radius of uh, a little circular core, coil is R over 2, so clearly this thing fits inside the, the solenoid. And let's place it so that um, it looks like that at some moment in time, but we're going to rotate it. So this is rotating. Um, how do I draw this? It's rotating around something like that. So that sometimes, if uh, this is the solenoid, sometimes right at the beginning it might look like that. Then later it will look like that. And uh, at some moment in time it will look like that. And so on. And then it will come back to this position. And then it will rotate downwards uh, and so on. So it keeps rotating around. And the question is, what is the... EMF induced in this coil. So again, EMF, we start with what EMF is, which is minus the time derivative of the magnetic flux. So it's a two-step process. First, let's find the magnetic flux, which by definition is the integral of the magnetic field over the surface. And so the key here, uh, the key issue here is that the magnitude of the magnetic field is constant. Um, the area of the coil is constant. It's pi times the radius squared. But it's the dot product that's changing. So we get B, the magnitude of B. Um, so this becomes the magnitude of B, which we can find out times the magnitude of the, well, times the area, which is just some positive quantity, times the cosine of the angle between the two. But that angle is changing. So if in this configuration, right, that the magnetic field is that way, and the normal to the surface is that way, and then the magnetic field always has the same direction, so it's always straight down at the coil. 
but the normal to the surface is changing direction. So that angle, which is this angle, right, has different values. And it's so therefore it's changing with time. And if we have it rotating um, at some angular velocity omega, let's say omega naught, then this becomes the magnitude of the magnetic field times the area times the cosine of omega naught times t, where theta is equal to omega naught times t. So the flux is therefore, what's the magnitude of the magnetic field? Well, we know it's mu naught times n times the current, which is I star. The area is pi times r over 2 squared times the cosine of omega naught t, and that's the flux. And so now we want to take minus the time derivative of this flux. That's the EMF. And so the only thing that's changing with time is the cosine part. So I'm going to pull out an omega, but I'm going to end up with a minus sign. And there's a minus sign here, so I'll get a positive sign. I have mu naught, omega naught, n i star times pi r squared over 4 times the sine of omega naught times t. So you can see that the EMF is changing sinusoidally with time. And if we wanted to find the induced current, we would have to take the EMF and divide it by the resistance of the coil.